Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 2 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Uh, today, I'd like to get a few more things done. Look how many cows are out here. That is amazing. Sweet. I will take it. Uh, the more cows, the better. Uh, probably should get a farm of some sort going, but for now, this will hold me over food-wise. I would also really love to have uh, a few sheep so that I can set up a bed of some sorts. Uh, so that in case I die, it's not the end of the world for me. Hey, another mining cave with iron in it. That's what's up. Uh, so last episode, we got a very basic little hovel going on in the wall, uh, which is kind of my usual starting world thing, right? Get some resources and get situated so we can get right started into setting up some good stuff. Um, modded stuff, that is. Um, and speaking of mods, we didn't even get through the mod list last episode, so we should probably start looking at doing that. Wow, there are just a lot of cows around, aren't there? I mean, I will take it, because it makes, you know, eating a little bit easier. Sorry, cows. Hey, look, the guy's got to eat, all right? Um, so we will continue talking about what mods are available in the pack today, and we will also hopefully get a little bit going uh, into the pack itself. Um, so I'm going to collect a few resources and do some stuff and talk about what other mods we've got. So um, we, we start off right around the middle of the alphabet uh, with M for Magic Bees. So Magic Bees is another add-on to Forestry that adds even more types of bees. So we have both Binny's mods and Gendistry and Magic Bees. So those of you who are into bees and trees should have no end of uh, opportunities to expand uh, and play with Forestry a bit. Um, not for sure that I'll get into all of that stuff uh, in the series. Um, I like bees, but I don't love bees. They're okay, but they're not great. Uh, but with Genistry, they're definitely better. Trees, they're even a little bit less enjoyable for me personally. But I know a lot of people do like them. So it's in the pack for those of you who enjoy it. Uh, we've got MC Multipart. Hey, here's a cool mod that starts with M uh, that was recently uh, been teased a little bit on Twitter. The Meat Creeps mod. Uh, Meat Creeps is a mod idea that I came up with. Uh, and uh, I asked McJady to help. Uh, he basically wrote all the code for. And uh, we've, if you're not familiar with him, he did a lot of the art assets for Britannia and Psy and a few other things. Uh, did some of the models. Uh, and meat creeps are cool. They are little creatures that you can spawn. They will do a single individual task for you, and then they will despawn. Uh, so they are basically like a little helper in your world. And we'll be taking a look at the meat creeps mod really soon. Uh, so I'm excited about meat creeps being a thing. Uh, we've got mob grinding utilities, which is a cool mod. Uh, that's the one that adds, uh, you know, the, the mob masher and a couple other nifty things uh, that basically help to grind up and, and, and kill mobs for you automatically. Um, we've got Morpheus, which is a mod that allows you to, you know, multiple people playing. It doesn't work so much on a single player world, but if you're playing on a server, uh, Morpheus allows you to configure um, a percentage of people that need to sleep in order to pass the night instead of requiring everyone on the server to sleep. Um, so pretty neat mod. Uh, we've got Morpho Tool, which is basically a mod that is like Akashic Tome. It allows you to uh, link a bunch of different tools into one individual item so you don't have to carry around six different wrenches. Still no sheep. Sheep nowhere. Might need to plant some flax or something. Get string for wool. Lots of cows. Not a lot of sheep. Oh well, no biggie. Let's head back to our little base. Um, well, maybe head off this way just to see if there's any sheep. Uh, so we've got, um, let's see, Morpho Tool. We've got Not Enough Wands. You guys are familiar with that one. Uh, adds a bunch of nifty wands to the game that can be used for all kinds of cool stuff. Also, Open Computers. Mentioned it a little bit last episode. It is a mod that adds in-game Lua scriptable computers, uh, which are a lot of fun to play with. Uh, so if you're into programming or if you'd like to get into programming, uh, Open Computers is definitely a nice place to start and play around with a little bit. Um, we've got Pam's Harvest Craft. Adds a ton of different um, you know, uh, food resources to the game. So those of you who like doing lots of different things with food, Pam's Harvest Craft will definitely be a mod that you enjoy. And uh, it's, it's cool and fun to play with, like I said. And it'll work really well with cooking for blockheads. So Pam's Harvest Craft, totally in there. Portal Gun Mod from iChun. Uh, so the Portal Gun Mod adds portals like uh, pretty much exactly like uh, the Portal game. So pretty neat mod and a lot of fun to play with. 
We've got uh, Psy, which is a magic-based tech mod, kind of. And it gives uh, your player the ability to do stuff. It's also kind of programming. Uh, so we, uh, we've we played with Psy in the past. And I might get into it a little bit in this series as well. Uh, while we're talking about that, let's see. Um, we've also got ranged pumps. We've got, um, let's see, Redstone Arsenal and uh, the Redstone Flux mod. Uh, so the Redstone Arsenal adds a bunch of Redstone-based uh, tools and armor, which is a lot of fun. That's pretty cool. Oh, a quiver. I've not seen the quiver before. Neat. I like that. I've not played with that before. I have no idea what that does, but it sounds cool. Uh, we've also got refined storage and reborn storage, which are kind of like applied energistics. It's getting dark out, isn't it? I kind of wanted to plant a farm. I guess I'll go mining while I still tell you guys about some of the mods in the pack. Uh, but I would definitely like to get into some tech stuff today as well. <clears throat> um, we've got RF tools and RF tools dimensions. Uh, we've got... We've also got uh, storage drawers. We've got Tinker's Construct, which we might want to get into pretty soon. Uh, we've got the One Probe, which is the uh, thing at the top of the screen telling you what blocks you're looking at. Um, we've got thermal mods, all the thermal mods. So thermal cultivation, thermal dynamics, thermal expansion, and thermal foundation uh, are all mods that uh, you guys probably are familiar with. We don't have Ender.io. You might have noticed that. Um, Ender.io has not been updated to 1.12 yet. I do believe it's being worked on, but it's just not updated yet. So uh, bummer that we don't have Ender.io, but we do have the thermal suite of mods. So last season we did a lot with Ender.io. This season we'll probably do a lot with thermal. So thermal expansion and all that good stuff for processing ores and 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 whatnot um i might even want to get into that a little bit today so we can start getting some ore doubling going on so we'll probably start working on the thermal mods today um and then we've got twilight forest those of you uh who've played with mods before are probably familiar with that one it adds this nifty dimension with lots of world gen and uh places to explore and it's a lot of fun and it has recently been revived so excited to see twilight forest coming back uh, and then that's pretty much it. We also have wireless crafting terminal, which is an add-on to applied energistics. But for the most part, that is it. Oh, we have uh, Xnet. I almost forgot about Xnet. Xnet is also another cool um, way of, of doing some automation stuff. So excited to have Xnet as well. All right, let me do some mining now that you guys are fully aware of all the mods that are in the pack. Usually I like to kind of do a lot of mining off camera, but usually in the first episode or two, I'll do some mining on camera so you can kind of see what early game looks like. Your standard early game in a mod pack is just like it is in a regular game. Go mining and get some resources so you have some, some useful stuff. Um, but we will come back in a few minutes here and uh, be back at my base. And I'd like to get probably going to see if we can get started with some technological stuff today. I would absolutely like to get started with some uh, maybe the thermal mods just to get the ability to, to process ores. Um, and then we'll probably expand from there. So back in a minute, once I've collected enough resources where I'll feel like I'm comfortable enough to make some machines. So my personal trick that I've mentioned several times in the past is anytime I'm exploring in a cave system, I always keep my torches on the right side of the wall uh, so that whenever I want to find my way out of a cave system, I follow the torches and keep them on the left side and I will eventually find my way back to where I was. So if you're exploring a deep cave system, that's kind of my personal little trick um, for getting around and, and doing cool stuff. So, finish my little mining expedition, have a little bit of durability left on my pick, not a huge amount, uh, but I'd like to start um, increasing the yield for my ores. That's kind of like the first thing I'd like to get into. Uh, so, let's see how feasible that is based on my current resources, right? Um, so, we should maybe potentially, possibly have the opportunity to uh, increase our resource yield. Um, so, to do that, I'm going to need a few things. I'm going to start off with thermal expansion um, because... Frankly, it's been a really long time since I've played with thermal expansion in a legit world. Uh, I feel like it's been since like 1, 7, 10 days. Because thermal expansion we got access to at like the very end of the 1.10 pack. So we kind of like, you know, real quick threw it together just to experience it a little bit. But it's been a long time since thermal expansion has been the foundation of how we progress through the game, right? So excited to give that a shot. So we're going to need a couple things. I'd like to have a redstone furnace because those are nice to have and a pulverizer because those are nice to have. So I guess to get a pulverizer and a couple of those other things, a lot of this is going to require redstone, which we haven't gotten yet. So I might be able to jump in the gun a little bit here. Um, with that said, let's cook up a little bit more iron. Um, and 
we will go back down and look for redstone because I haven't gotten enough redstone yet. To, to I haven't gotten any redstone yet, and that's probably going to lead to a bit of a problem. So I will need to get redstone uh, to get started there. I really would like to find some sheep as well or something that I can use to... Let's see, is it becoming daytime? It is. Nice. Um, maybe we should set up a little farm too out here. Let's get a hoe. That should be a good start. Uh, we'll get a stone one. Uh, and we can probably just set up a farm right outside Mir. Ow. Hey guys, what's up? Yeah, shoot each other. For now... We'll just get that going, right? Um, and maybe just a few wheat seeds. Because I do have some, some, some beef, but... Seeds, anybody? Pam's Harvest Craft. Nice. We'll get a bunch of seeds from Pam's Gardens. Now we're talking. So I'm not sure what all seeds I might have gotten from her. Let's see. Parsnip, onion, corn... Hops from Binnie's. Uh, let's see, we got some industrial hemp in these seeds. We also got winter squash and cucumbers. See, Pam's adds lots of food types. You'll find windy gardens and you'll find other gardens of similar types. Shaded gardens, for example. They all have different resources in them. So there's like a bunch of different seed types and you'll find them in those gardens from Pam's. Hey, cool. More hops from Binnie. All right, let's uh, throw some seeds down. We'll do some industrial hemp, which will get a string, by the way. Um, I don't know what all... Let's see. Corn sounds like a good time, right? That doesn't sound terrible. And we'll try parsnips as well. I don't know how much I want to get into some of this other stuff. I'm going to, like, just drop that for now. But we'll come back to it. Hey, what's up, skeleton? See ya. Nice. All right, I'm going to go get some redstone uh, underground. We'll come back when I find some. Deal? Deal. So one of the features that we do have um, is JEI resources, which allows you to um, check out what Y level you're likely to find ores in. So if you're looking for a specific ore, and there are tons of them because there's a lot of mods, um, we you, you can look it up in JEI resources. So just look up the ore type. So for example, if I want to know where to find iron, you'll find it pretty much in the same quantity anywhere from Y level 64 down. However, if you're looking for copper um, ore, you will find that, um, looks like, let's see, copper ores look up isn't looking too good, but redstone ore, you can see you'll find it right around Y level 17 and down. So nifty way to go ahead and, you know, track down stuff. So kept going down through my uh, little cave here and I found some good stuff. Actually quite a bit of good stuff. Found like a nice little ravine with what looks like a decent amount of lava, which is good, uh, cause we're gonna want some lava uh, sooner than later. So let's maybe consider Expanding out this little platformy area. And we can get into this area. And I also see diamonds. I see diamonds. Which is exciting to me. Um, I don't want to avoid any lava right at the moment. But diamonds I will take. And you, sir, are probably going to be a nuisance. There we go. Better. Hey! Achievement get! Diamonds. Nice. Excited about that. Uh, cool. So we've got diamonds. That is good stuff. Actually, a decent diamond node. And hey, redstone right behind it. Perfect. Uh, I'm gonna need a decent amount of redstone probably to get started, because, I mean, it's called Redstone Flux for a reason, right? I mean, it's heavily based on redstone. So I'm going to find a couple more redstone uh, nodes, and if I find something else cool down here while I'm exploring, I will let you know. But uh, hopefully we should come back in a few minutes with a little bit of redstone, uh, and we'll be ready to get into some basic machines. Hey, another first. Gold. I think that's my very first piece of gold that I got, so that's cool. Ooh, and now finding lapis. All right, I think that's pretty much all the vanilla ores that I'm going to find. Neat. And more redstone. Beautiful. 
So I've collected a little bit more than a stack of redstone. Hopefully that will be enough to get started with a couple basic machines. So there's a few things we're gonna to need to get started with. Um, we're gonna to have to create the machines that will do the work for us, and we're also gonna to have to create power, and we're also gonna to have to create uh, energy conduits that can transfer the power from the thing that generates the power to the machines uh, that need the power. And it might even be cool to have something to store power. So long story short, we need uh, a, a bunch of stuff. So hopefully we will have enough stuff. So let's do that, because that is all my resources there. And that and that. Cool. So to get started with uh, the redstone flux mod, we're definitely going to need some of you. Iron, copper, tin, that kind of stuff. We will probably need some lead. Um, and I don't know that we need any diamonds just yet. So that's cool. Uh, let's take a look. So the first thing we'll want from thermal, um, let's get power generation first. So a steam dynamo requires a transmission coil, some copper gears, some iron. The transmission coil needs silver. Um, so let's definitely get a steam dynamo. So there's different ways to generate power. There's magmatic that runs off uh, basically lava. Um, there's steam dynamo, which basically runs off water and uh, some kind of solid fuel like coal. And then there's a few others that we'll get into later. Um, but for now, your basic one is steam and magmatic. I think those will definitely be um, a couple good ones to start with. However, magmatic, requires invar which we don't technically have the resources to make just yet so we'll start with steam cool so we're going to want to smelt up um, a bunch of resources now some of these resources i have a lot of some of them not so much so i wouldn't mind starting off with a quartz grindstone uh just so i can a little bit more easily so i need three of those i'm gonna need it looks like uh this is three stone and two cobblestone so let's smelt up a few stone uh we will get ourselves uh the grindstone wooden crank we're also going to need a wooden gear, which is that. So that's cool. Um, and once we have the three stones smelted up, we can start manually grinding. So usually early game, when I only have a handful of ores, it's a good idea to, to really be efficient with your ore usage. Um, so getting a quartz grindstone that we can use to start grinding up our resources is probably not a terrible idea. So that's what I'm doing here. So we're going to get that quartz grindstone. We'll pop them into the corner. We'll put a crank on top and uh, let's grind up a few bits of copper. Does that sound good? So just by right clicking on this dude, we'll see that it's uh, basically grinding our copper ore and we should get for one copper ore, we'll get two copper dust and we'll continue to grind that. Um, and then that dust can be smelted into ingots, which should be cool. Uh, so let's do that. So we're gonna want maybe two more so we can get eight copper. Um, and we'll probably want to do a little bit more. I do have silver, right? We said we needed silver. I'm almost certain I found some. Good. So you see, we only have like a handful of silver. That's one we'll definitely also want to grind. Uh, it's very manual and painful, but pretty soon we'll have machines to handle this automatically for us. All right, so we've got some dusts going on here. Let's get another iron. Um, been basically pulverizing a couple of the different dusts that we're going to need um, to get the metals that we're going to want. There we go. Well, seven? Why don't we get one from that? That's interesting. That's very interesting. Huh. Maybe iron doesn't work so well on this thing. No big deal. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do, by the way, is convert my charcoal into chi tiny charcoal. Uh, basically, tiny charcoal smelts one resource per charcoal. So that's really uh, a nice way to be a little bit more efficient with your charcoal production and usage. So overall, definitely a good approach to take if you're going to be smelting something that's not eight, right? I turned a bunch of uh, my metals into the 8x version, but it's all good. Uh, so we've got a handful of metals here. Uh, let's get our two. So let's get our, our, our steam dynamo first. Uh, so we're going to need a couple copper gears. Check. Uh, and then we're also going to need uh, a silver and a couple pieces of redstone. Is silver what I'm smelting right now? Not yet. So let's get silver. In, or no, I do have silver. Good. Um, so we're going to want just one of these for now. We will probably eventually need more. Um, and then we just need a little bit more iron uh, is all we're waiting on here. And this will be one of our very first truly modded things that we have access to. Nice. All right. So what I'm thinking I'll do, um, well, we'll stick it uh, kind of in this wall area here. So another thing I'd like to have, uh, and did I smash up some lead? I did. Good. Lead's going to be the next thing I smelt. Because uh, I would like an energy cell. Uh, leadstone energy cells are definitely a great way uh, to get started in the pack for energy storage. So steam dynamos create power. 
Energy cells will store power, and then we're going to create some machines that are going to use that power, right? Um, so we're going to need a, a bit of an electrum in order to get that. I think I can make electrum happen because um, I can get some electrum grit, which is ground up gold and silver. We found literally one piece of gold. Um, so we're going to grind that guy up. Cool. Uh, not the worst thing to use your first piece of gold on. Trust me in that. Cool. We got a couple gold dust. And uh, we'll get one more. I'll grind up a piece of silver as well. Because um, we smelted all our silver, so we need to grind up another one for dust. Cool. You can crush up ingots, by the way, but you only get one dust uh, per ingot instead of two, which you usually get. Grindstones aren't the most efficient thing in the world. Uh, but this should get me two electrum, which I can then smelt into my electrum ingot, uh, which should be good. Cool. So the energy cell will be a nice thing to have. So we're going to want, uh, it looks like a lead gear. Cool. And uh, we're going to need more iron, and we're also going to need some glass. It doesn't have to be cyan stained. It's any kind of glass uh, that is available to us. So let's get a little bit more iron ground up here. I'm going to do eight more of these. And we'll be back in a minute. Nobody tell Palomar I'm digging up the speech. I just need a little bit of glass. All right, so smelting up some iron. Uh, we will have enough stuff now, hopefully, to make one of these. Oh, I need the glass, that's right. Uh, let's get most of that out of there. That's interesting. Why did it reset the smelting progress? It was intended not to do that. Okay, uh, a little bit of glass, and then we'll be good to go for the energy cell. Uh, the other thing we're going to need, by the way, is a bucket to transfer some water. Eventually, I'm going to want to automate the production of water because we want to keep this steam dynamo filled with water all the time. Um, but long story short, for now, we have to do it manually. Uh, but the name of the game is automation in this pack, so eventually it will be fully automated. Um, good, it's becoming daytime out there. Excellent. So three pieces of glass, one more to go, and then we'll have our energy cell. And you can see there's a lot of different tiers of energy cell. Um, the higher tiers can typically store more power and transfer more power. Uh, so there's an energy cell. Uh, we're going to want one of these. And then we just need one of these. And we should be now good to go. Nice. Energy cell. So let's see how we can get this thing producing power for us. Uh, what I'm going to do is store some of you for a bit. I'm also going to grab about eight of these uh, so I can convert them into tiny coal, right? Tiny coal burns for one eighth the time that this does. 1,600 ticks, eight, 200 ticks, right? So one eighth. Um, for now, I'm just going to stick my energy cell in the corner. Uh, the user config side here basically tells you which sides can import and export. So input is the blue side. So any side that's blue is input. And if you want to change the right side to output, for example, orange is output. And then yellow means you're not allowed to transfer power at all, right? It just doesn't connect, right? So for now, this thing is set up to accept power from most sides. We'll stick down our dynamo. So now we need to throw coal and water in there. We can also configure whether or not it needs a redstone signal to run. So for now, I'll enable that. On high means that it requires a redstone signal to run. On low, it means it has to not be getting a redstone signal. So if it got a redstone signal, it would stop. And then ignored would mean I run all the time. We can augment it, which we'll talk about later. And this is RF generation. So at most, it can produce 40 RF a tick. Let's go get a couple buckets of water. Um, what I might want to do is set up an infinite pool of water inside for a minute. Um, might not be a terrible idea. Like, let's do this. And then go get another bucket's worth. Um, this way we'll have access to infinite water right inside our base for the temporary time that we're going to be living in here. Eventually, obviously, we'll move out of this hole, but for now, this will be nice. So I should be able to just right-click that. You can see one probe is telling me how much liquid is in the tank. So one out of four buckets that can be stored there. So two, three, four. Boom. Tank is full. Coal is in. Now it just needs a redstone signal to run because I set it to. Give it to it, and boom, we're generating power. 40 RF a tick, which we can see starting to go into here. Nice. This can hold 2 million RF. So it'll hold a decent amount of power. Great. We'll let that coal kind of burn through. Obviously, tiny coal doesn't last very long. It's tiny, but you get the idea. Cool. 
So, uh, hey, the very first bit of RF power gen is happening now. All right, guys, so the good news is we generate about 128,000 RF. Now, we would generate pretty much the exact same amount if we just threw eight pieces of coal in there. They would just last a little bit longer. And obviously, we're going to have to keep manually filling it up with water, um, but that's something, like I said, we'll automate eventually. Let's get to the next step. I'd like to get a redstone furnace, if I may. So that is this guy. So we're going to need a couple more copper gears, which means we're totally going to need more copper. So we'll come back in a minute. All right, so cooking up more copper, threw a bunch of coal in there because I want to actually have like a decent amount of RF in reserve uh, before we move on to the next step. Uh, the other thing I'm probably going to need is not to have a creeper outside my door. Got him. Nice. All right, uh, we're also going to need to kill the skeleton, apparently. Nice. All right, uh, I would love to have... Hey, look, there's that book. <laughs> nice. On the dynamics of integration. Ooh, aquamarine. We're going to need some of that soon uh, when we decide it's time to get into astral sorcery. Uh, clay, because I'm going to need some bricks. So we need to get ourselves a little bit of clay. Hopefully that's not going to prove itself to be too hard. because We're in like this nice little beachy kind of area here. Let's see if we can get under... The water bay. It looks like a lot of gravel beach type stuff going on right here. So maybe we want to head more in this direction to find some clay. Clay, wherefore art thou clay? Don't make this one of those uh, clays impossible to find packs. Shouldn't be too bad. Actually, I might even see a piece in this direction. So is that clay right down there? Right there? It might be only one piece. But it would be promising. It is clay. Hooray! Nice. All right, so one piece of clay down. Uh, we're going to need at least one more uh, to get the redstone furnace that we need. Clay. Where are you, clay? Let's look around this shoreline. Ah, uh, here's a good reserve underground. Nice. I'll meet you guys back at the base after I've gotten a bunch of this. All right, so uh, I left my uh, iron smelting here. We have a little bit. I made another bit of tiny coal, uh, which should be good. I have to smelt up this clay into bricks, and then we should be good to go. While that's smelting, let's work through the furnace craft. Uh, so we're going to need a piece of gold. Good thing I saved that one gold dust, isn't it? Nice. Okay, hold on. Let's... Uh, Oh yeah, look at that. Mouse wheeling resets the... Okay, that's interesting. That is weird. Yeah, when you use the mouse wheel to de take stuff out of there, it uh, resets the counter on that. Cool. Oh well, that's the one piece of gold. So we are out of gold now. We found literally one piece of gold while mining, and we used everything about it. Cool. Uh, so Redstone Furnace needs one of these dudes. <clears throat> You're going to need two of these. So you need a stone gear for copper gears? Really? Hold on. Uh, we can do it better than that. Uh, let's get the that one. Yeah. So we're going to want two of those. Uh, and then we're going to need a machine frame, which needs a tin gear. Uh, tin gear from thermal is probably the best approach to go. And then we will need uh, some more glass and iron. I thought I smelted more glass. Did I put it away? I need to put it away. Totally put it away. Nice. And now we just need the bricks uh, to get ourselves a furnace. While we're waiting on that, by the way, let's get... Do I have any more lead? I do, but I have to wait to smelt it. Um, I wouldn't mind some leadstone energy conduits to transfer power to our pulverizer and uh, whatchamacallit. So we will let this finish smelting, and then we will get some lead, and that'll be good. Cool. Uh, so now we should be good to make two of these. And we have everything we need now to make a redstone furnace. Beautiful. I want the redstone furnace to live here. Um, and this thing takes power and smelts things. I'd like the pulverizer to go here. Uh, so I'm going to open up the configuration. If you shift click on the center here, it closes all the sides so that there's no input output side specifically. Um, and that should be neat. So let's do that. We've got that guy. So can I get some leadstone energy conduits? So I just need one piece of glass. 
There you are, sir. That's what's nice about the tiny coal. You can smelt a single piece of sand in a glass and not feel like you're wasting resources. It is literally exactly one piece of tiny coal per smelting operation. Literally the best thing ever. Uh, and a bit of redstone, and we're good to go. Um, so what I'm going to do here is make sure... So right now we've got around 575,000 RF, which is good. Uh, I'm going to make sure that you're configured so the bottom is orange, so it's outputting power. And then we can do this, and you will start getting power now. Cool. So these leadstone energy conduits are your first line of uh, attack when it comes to transferring energy from an energy cell across a distance. Now, if you didn't have these yet, you could place the redstone furnace on the side of the energy cell, like right here, uh, and make sure this guy's set to orange, but that's not really necessary in this case. So now we can smelt stuff like tin, and you'll notice it's a lot faster of a smelting operation, which is awesome. Um, so now that we've got that, let's get a pulverizer going before we wrap up the episode here. Uh, so a pulverizer is going to require a few more copper gears and another machine frame. Uh, so we're definitely going to want uh, a bit more crushed up ores. So I'll be back in a minute when we're done with that. Okay, so we should have some copper here ready to go. Nice. And that will smelt a lot faster in the redstone furnace. The other nice thing is that it's using energy instead of fuel directly. Um, so we should probably also get use of more water. That's good. Um, so if I want a pulverizer, this is tin. I've only got two tin at the moment. Uh, I've got four tin at the moment. All right. Uh, that actually might be enough for that. We're going to want four more glass, which we can smelt easily enough. Another cool thing we can do, by the way, guys, um, is get a chest and throw it up here. And we can configure this guy to output to the top. And with auto output enabled, it'll automatically dump anything into the inventory above it. Neat, right? So as it smelts, it automatically lands above. Beautiful. Loving it. Uh, let's get a little bit more iron ground up. Because we're going to need iron uh, for the pulverizer. Hopefully I get more than two from this. Because if I don't, uh, it's just bad luck. There we go. All done, I think. Nice, nice, we got four, beautiful. So then we can just you know throw that in there and we're good to go. Uh, so that's the iron we're gonna need, so that's one. We'll get our glass, we'll get our iron. We can now make a machine frame again, cool. Uh, we'll need, oh, another piece of gold, brutal. Uh, let me go mine for a piece of gold real quick because I do want to finish this before the episode wraps up. Hey, look at me, right here in this little ravine, there was a bunch of gold on the wall, lucky. All right, ground up a single piece of gold into two gold dust. Nice and fast to smelt the one that I need. Check and check. Now we should be able to have everything we need for a pulverizer, I think. Uh, let's get our one, two of these that we need. Uh, we'll need some flint, which should be makeable. Uh, we'll also need a piston. Uh, looks like another piece of iron is going to be needed here. Unlucky. But we're almost there. Uh, and then the gravel uh, outside will probably supply us with the two flint that we need. Let's take care of that real fast. So there's plenty of gravel out here. And I'm pretty sure this recipe exists. Perfect. Three gravel becomes a piece of flint. Nice. Hey, zombie, stop wandering into my base. Thank you very much. Nobody invited you in. Cool. Uh, so there's that stuff. And we should now be able to make one of these. And therefore... Didn't I make copper gears like a second ago? Where'd my copper gears go? I know I just made some, didn't I? There it is. They were hiding in the furnace somehow. Uh, pulverizer is good to go. Nice. So now uh, let's configure you to output everything to the right. So if we throw gold in there, for example, it's going to start doubling my gold into dusts and it'll automatically output it to the right side. Uh, and then it'll be smelted and placed directly into the chest. Cool. So gold dust. Uh, you have to be configured to blue on the left, right? So orange on the right, blue on the left. Zombies, please. I'm talking here. Uh, so you should get your gold 
and it'll then wind up in the chest. Nice. So that's wrapping up point. So between episodes, I'm going to process all my ores that I have here, uh, get them up and running, and then we'll come back next episode and have a bit more fun uh, with some good stuff. All right, guys. Hope you guys are enjoying the series thus far. For now, Daryl Twenty signing off. Take it easy.